Off the Clock, episode three, Simpra, Tyler, Cole, Jess. Thanks for coming through, guys. Congrats on three million. Quite the Thank achievement. You much, man. I appreciate um, it. All considering you're independent, um, you've done it all within three years and all the way at the bottom of the globe. Growing up, did you always think you'd be doing this? No. But I had fucking like no clue. This was like even like a couple of years ago when I started, like I had no fucking idea that I would be. Well, like when I started, I guess I was like, I started as a joke. Um, like I made a, a song on an Xbox headset. Turtle Beach? Yep. I think there were Turtle Beach XO1s, I think they were called, with the bass boost, ver- uh, like the bass boost version. Um, so I made I made a song through Audacity with that, that mic and I kind of just got addicted to it. And then like fucking like 2019 rolled around and that's when I decided maybe I might try. Yeah. Were you um, producing your own beats right from the start? Or were you jumping on other ones? No, I was like doing the fucking like the free free YouTube artist type beats. I was jumping on like Ski Master Slump God type beats yeah. and stuff, and then I just like post them on SoundCloud. Let's take it right back for um, anyone who doesn't know your whole story. So like growing up, you moved around quite a lot. How did that play into your music career? Um, I don't know if like per se moving around a lot played into it. Um, it definitely like fucking molded my personality. Yeah. Like um. I'm a bit of like a mixed mutt when it comes to like the different places that I've lived in. Like I've just like taken little parts of like the culture of those places and sort of built my personality through that. Um, and I guess you could say that as that might play a part. Yeah, because eventually it led you to Tyler. So you guys, you guys have a great story. So I'd love you guys to tell that how you guys first linked up. I just I messaged him because I used to run shows, and I heard his music one day and I was like, oh, this is a bit good. And then I saw he was from New Zealand. And I was like, oh, 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 that's nice. And then we sort of just like fucked around and message for a bit. And then he hit me up, he's like, oh, I'm gonna come to Wellington, just hang out. And he came down, we got in the piss, had a fucking amazing time. And then he went back home to, was it Hamilton or Waihe? Both, I think, at the time. Was it? Was I in uni or no? Yeah, he was oh, at uni. Yeah. And then end of the year, I was at a festival and I was pretty fucked up off my head and he messaged me saying he was gonna get kicked out. So I did the only reasonable thing while fucked up and called my mother and asked <laughs> <laughs> and asked if he could come and stay. And there was a yes, rest is history. Yeah. How many listeners did he first have when you found him? It would have been like maybe in between ten to 20,000. I don't even think it was that much. Yeah. When I first joined Schema Posse, I had like, I had two accounts. And I, so I had my Death Eater account and then my Semper account yeah. that I had like just started. And I had like, I think, I think it might have been like 6,000. Yeah, the Semper one was like... Close to five. Yeah. Yeah, just like nothing. Just yeah. mm. like rob the bank numbers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, sort of just like puny numbers, you know. Like, So you've been over to the States recently. You went over um, a few weeks ago. How did that all go? And like, what was it like linking up with Fat Nick and Pia and all those guys? Oh, I was pretty, it was pretty surreal, bro. Like, um, the fucking, the, the, the travel there was treacherous. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I got them to book through Expedia because I was like trying to save them money, I guess. They'd like, be a nice guy. Um, but I really fucked myself over with that one because um, they like they like fucked my flights around so much. And then when I did eventually end up leaving, I had to fly from <coughs> from Wellington to Sydney, which was four hours. And then from Sydney to LA, which is a further 12 and a half hours. And then from LA to Miami, which was another six hours. But that was all in one day. And like all my layovers were like maybe an hour. So I just was going plane to plane to plane to plane. And fucking the 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 flight from LA, like I got to LAX, I was so fucked. I had, like hadn't slept and um it was hot as fuck. I got to the airport, got to my gate, and I like went to go get my boarding pass and, and they were trying to tell me that my flight ticket had already been used. That I'd like already flown to Miami. And I was like, Well I just I just haven't though, have I? <laughs> was the plane gone by then or? No, nah, no, nah, it was about to though. I was like, oh. I was kind of fucking close. It was bad delays beforehand as well with the other one. Yeah, and I was like, I was just like sitting there at the desk while they, they called up Qantas and like rectified the issue. Um, and then my phone died and I didn't have like an American charger in my bag, so I couldn't fucking plug it in. Uh, I was like sitting between two people on the plane, like sore as fuck tailbone from the economy seats. And I was just like rocking back and forth like six hours. There was no, there was no TV in the ba- in the ba- in the seats either. So I just was literally just left with my thoughts. I so no going, music because your phone's dead. Like every, yeah. yeah, dead fucking. I was just literally sitting there like twiddling my thumbs for six hours. 
I could not do that, eh? Something always goes wrong on those flights, bro. Yeah, but yeah, I got to Miami and I like walked out of the airport and that shit was so fucking humid. It was like Fiji on steroids. Um, and then Swig Ramirez's manager, ma- blah, 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 Ramirez's manager picked me up, and then we went to Fat Nick's house. Met Fat Nick. He was like, so he's a super chill dude, like exactly the same as he fucking is on the internet, but like, like really generous and like was always asking me if I was all good or like I needed anything and all that sort of stuff. Or, like drive me around. Like took me out to dinner and shit to this restaurant where they like sell, uh, they serve like twelve hundred dollar steaks. That's right. Like tomahawk fucking wagyu steaks in like a briefcase, and they like um. So and Miami's like a real like dick swinging like fucking um, wealthy place where everyone is like trying to look wealthy as well as being wealthy, and um, so they like naturally. If there's a twelve hundred dollar steak on the menu, menu, people are gonna like fucking ball out and buy it. And they so like when they buy it, they play the purge siren. <laughs> so like they, the whole no fucking whole restaurant know that you've bought it. They play the purge siren, and then they um they gather every single like wait staff in the building. They come over to your table. They like play a song of your choice and they start dancing. Everyone's like fucking around your table. There's like this like briefcase, and they open it. It's like smoke comes out of it, and they're like, "Hey, hey!" And all the way stuff like you're standing on the tables and shit. It's like fucking some of the goofiest shit I've ever seen in my life. But it was like an interesting experience. What song did you choose? Oh, we didn't order that shit. Oh, <laughs> no, no, fuck you! You would not catch me ordering a twelve hundred dollar steak, bro. It's just like I just have no way to justify that. Yeah. Um, we were just like we we counted how many people they like, ordered it, and there was like eight different tables ordered what the fuck? It in the time that I was there in one meal. What well, some of the other culture shocks from your experience, like going over to the states? Supercars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Miami, just like fucking every two seconds, there's like Lamborghinis and shit. Yeah. Um, tipping, they like. It's like I don't know if it's like widely known in New Zealand that America does the tipping thing, but like I figured that out when I was like 18. I, I went there the first time. I didn't tip anyone because I didn't realize it was a thing. So I looked like the biggest fuck with, and I just had no idea. Because yeah, that's how that's how they get most of their pay there, right? Just like yeah. tips and everything, like yeah. Yeah, so I just I didn't I, I wasn't tipping that first time, and then the second time and the third time we back we were tipping and stuff. But just like the size of everything is crazy too. Yeah, obviously people now are seeing you going overseas, like got a lot of numbers now. I want to hear more about your come up. Like, what's some of the what's one of the hardest things you've had to overcome to get to where you are now? Oh, definitely like the anxiety, um, music. And like releasing music is a super fucking like vulnerable thing. Um, like you know, you're you're creating something that comes from you and like represents you, and you're like putting it out to the masses, and that's like kind of daunting um, at the start. But you kind of get used to it, and like the fact that it's all over the internet for the most part, um, most of the time is like I guess it's like I'm desensitized to it. But um, also fucking like hate, like coming to terms with like the fact that people are gonna hate your guts regardless of like whether they know you or not, they, you know, they could, like, hear, like, 10 seconds of one of my songs and go, fuck this guy. And, like, being able to, like, especially when you're, like, a self-critical person like I am, um, it's super hard to, to like, deal with the fact that that's a reality and that's going to, that's going to grow and there's going to be more hate, like, the bigger you get. But um, I think I've done well to, like, not let it get to me, I guess. There's, there's like, there's a mix of it. So like, there's probably just as many people, or if not more, that like, when they hear it, they love it. Yeah, exactly. But like, there's that, like, it's gonna be the yin yang of like both of them. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's like, that's an important thing as well. Is just like, the way I look at it is like, for like every hate comment, there's like ten positive comments. You know, like, um, and that's for other artists as well. I'd give that advice. It's just like always like see the positive side of it. Like fuck, whatever the fuck they say because there's like 15 more people that are gonna like love you and your music. Well, some things you do like in your downtime, like to keep your mental right, because obviously like still being independent, um, it's like you're doing it all yourself. So I can imagine that could be quite a lot, um, especially at the level you're at now. Bro, I do literally fuck all in my downtime apart from like make beats. Because I only see you on the weekends. Yeah, yeah um, every Friday. When we get on the piss. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's like literally all week, because like if I'm gonna do something, I'll just like make a beat. Or like watch a movie or some shit. Like fucking hit play, play a game here and there. I don't go outside. I just make beats. Yeah. Well, some of your early musical inspirations. Um, the first like biggest like main inspiration that I ever had was X. Um, just like he was like the so I got into like um, I got into Denzel Curry when I was like 15, and that was like my introduction to like that world, I guess. Um, 
<clears throat> so I found Denzel Curry and through Denzel Curry, uh, I found X somehow. I can't remember. I think I found X. Um, it was like this meme compilation on Facebook, and and look at me, wasn't it? And I was like, what, what the fuck is this? Like, that was like before. It was like just as it was blowing up, I guess. And um, yeah, I found that song, and I like sort of. It's like the first time I've ever like taken a dive into like an artist and like learned to, and researched them and like about about them as an artist and also like their discography and like yeah I just there was just so much to learn about him and like so many different uh like sounds and he was versatile as fuck so I found that like super inspiring you know like he could like release us one a song fucking one week and it'll be completely different to the song that comes out next um just like keeps you on your toes and that's like a big inspiration for me and my music it's like keeping it as versatile as possible um which I think a lot of more people will see as I keep growing um because it's like at the moment People will know me as like fucking like funk rapper, like cowbells, all that sort of stuff. But that's like just because it's the most popular and it's like the base, the base song that people find. Um, but I think it'll be interesting when people start to have those conversations about the rest of my music, like the boom bap and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, like X inspired that part of my music, that versatility. Um, and then from X, I sort of found like Puyo, Ghost Man, Suicide Boys, and then I sort of made like a melting pot of all of those inspirations. Yeah. Do you think you're waiting to become like more established before you release like your boom bap stuff or? Um, no, not necessarily. Like I've I've released quite a bit um, in the past, but I guess I'm like I'm trying to time it perfectly. So I'm not. I could I could just make like five fucking like cowbell warriors in a row, and then just go kaboom. Like there's like a reality I could choose, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do is like have like those cowbell warrior songs. So I'll have like like a fucking cowbell banger, and then like a boom bap or like uh, like a dark trap song in between and then another one like just time it so it's like spread out and I'm like building my discography, um, making it broader in terms of genres while also like not like depriving the fans of what they want. Yeah. How important for you is it to stay diverse as an artist because obviously every artist has like a sound maybe from their biggest song but I feel like people are very complex and draw inspirations from a lot of different things. So how do you feel like that kind of has an influence on you? Uh, I think it's like, that is like one of the most important parts of my music to me is like having that longevity and like being able to explore these different genres because, it, you know, like at the end of the day, like things get old, um, genres get old. You, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, and, and like what I want to do with it is just like, I'll adhere to like a certain area, I guess, of music like the certain sound that I have now, but just develop it so that I can take it and like keep keep it like sort of tight, the genres, even though they're completely different genres, like you can still tell it's me and I still have signatures in each of those genres. So everything's cohesive. Yeah. I just want to yeah, like create it myself and my music, I guess, as sort of a project that is very broad and diverse, but also cohesive. Yeah, is what? there any, oh. Sorry, bro. No, you're good. No, you, you go. No, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it under Semper or do you think you'll keep, like, do, like, different, like, identities? Oh, no, I'll just keep it under Semper. I, I think um, it would be, like, a little bit counterproductive for me to do different um, identities because, you know, I could, like, I could just stop rapping completely and just, like, be a fucking producer and I'll just keep the same name sort of thing. Because you touched upon those styles there that you're into. What made you actually, like, jump into, like, the style that you do now? Like, it's, like, what, what draw, drew you to that? Um, I think it was like 1,000 Rounds by Ghost Man and Puya. That song was like, introduced me to like that sort of thing. And then I just like went backwards, I guess, into like Ethel Wolf and fucking like 3-6 Mafia, um, Jay Green and all that, all that sort of stuff. So I, like, that's what I've, I've always sort of done is like found something new and then researched backwards and then um, like drew inspiration from all of those styles and they sort of just like melted into mine, I guess. Mm. Oh, oh, actually, there's a funny story behind that. That like the fast rap. Sorry, Dan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fucking. So I like when I was like eight, I, I used to like really love Eminem, and I'd like I, <laughs> I had like a little like iPod shuffle, and I it was just like filled with like fucking Eminem songs, and I'd go on like um I'd go on my computer on YouTube and like do like find lyric videos and shit and like like find his fastest verses and like rap along to them, and I was like eight at the yeah. time, so I was like that's like. It's weird, it's like a weird foreshadowing to like the fast rap now, I guess. It's like learning how to do that shit back then. 
Because I was going to ask, how did you learn to rap so fucking quick? But must have yeah, been rap insane. god. <laughs> yeah, no, I learned that as well. Any covers up on YouTube? No, nah, no, nah, fuck no. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Just yourself, yeah. No, nah, yeah. So that is definitely my intro, like my first first introduction to like rapping fast, I guess. But then, um, yeah, I sort of took that and um, just like built it up and like learned how to do it properly, like in terms of like spitting with like different syllables and stuff, um, and then, like how it works. Because it's like there's a specific way that you have to rap fast for it to actually work. Otherwise, it just like slows together and shit. Is there any genres you're looking to jump into in the future that people might not expect? I just like I'm, I don't really plan it out, eh? Like yeah. I'll fucking just like go about my life and I'll like hear a song that I I like and I guess I'll be like, oh, I want to try something like that and I'll try it and if it doesn't work, no one will fucking hear about it. And <laughs> <laughs> but if it does, then it's like cool. I've like I've got something else under my belt, you know. Yeah, because you produce and like mix and like do everything for your stuff. Even the al album covers, like all the yeah. like cover arts. Like, what made you want to do it all in house, like to yourself? Like, I don't. Know. Yeah, it was just like a thing that sort of happened, um, like over time. So I learned how to use Photoshop in like 2014. I think I was making like COD clan emblems and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I was like, just like, because I, I like the look of them, and I was just like fucking around doing that, just like playing with it. Um, so that was like my initial like gateway into like learning software, um, like editing software. And I like, I I really enjoy doing that shit. Like there's like, there's like the learning aspect of it and like just like self teaching and stuff. It's like really rewarding. Um, so like doing that, I just like learned how to make art on Photoshop. And that was like the first introduction. Then I moved to video editing, um, which was also like, I was like editing COD videos and shit. Um, just I was like I was they were like crude and shitty and I like but I liked uh, film in sc in school as well so I like went to university and studied film um, and got a degree in that so that was like the next step so I did all of that shit before I started music so I already knew how to do all that and then learned how to well, I didn't even like learn I just fucking chucked my shit in Audacity and recorded a song um, but I like obviously like figured out over time how to like do everything myself like taught myself production after I sort of moved into rapping. So I did I did the rap first and then the production afterwards. But yeah, it's like, um, for me, doing it all in house is just like that 100% creative control thing. Like I don't have to go to producers and like ask them to make this and have to go back and forth with them to get it exactly how I want it. And even then it's not gonna be exactly how I want it because someone else has made it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I'm creating what I want, like I can have it exactly as I want it and I can like, I can like do so much with it, like fuck around, like make it experimental, you know, like do soundscape elements and crazy shit just because I have that, that is so malleable because I'm making everything. It's like a joy of being an independent artist. There's also like a fear, like if you want to sign like further down the line that you'll be handing off like more creative processes to like other people. Yeah, you can like this. So deals in 2022 are like they're they're changing, I guess, from what what I've learned about them is just like there's there's not as much of that like right taking, I guess, when it comes to creative control. Like I would never sign a fucking deal that didn't allow me to create my own music or like where I was forced to have writers come in or like engineers or the the reason my music is like doing as well as it is is because it's like made in my bedroom. You know, like it has that sound and that energy to it. And I feel like when you, when I take away that energy, um, it just it takes it takes away such a big part of my music. So yeah, no, I'm, I I wouldn't sign a deal ever that would fucking sort of just like tie my hands, I guess. I guess you got a crazy leverage now with like three million monthly streams and like a bunch of fans in yeah. there. That's like a reality in the industry now as well. It's just like you don't actually have to. Yeah. Like there's benefits and there's downsides to signing. But there's also like benefits and downsides to being independent. Um, but you can do either one, which is like, which is good. And that leverage is good as well. You just hit three million monthly listeners today, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And like, how does that feel to you? Like, does, can, has that sunk in yet? Like, have you been able to like figure that out? Like being starting at like so little then, and also the numbers being from, not all from New Zealand, you know? Yeah. Um, that's pretty crazy. Like, at the end of the day, like it's just numbers, you know, they could go away tomorrow sort of thing. Um, I try not to like let that fucking get to my head, I guess. It's not, you know, like fucking, I could have like five million monthly listeners and still be a nobody sort of thing, you know, like, um, but yeah, it's like, it's sunk in, I guess. Like it's sunk in at like the first like 100,000 
because I the way I see it is like if I can get ten people listening to my music, I can get twenty. If I can get twenty, I can get fifty. Fifty, a hundred, hundred, a thousand, thousand, fifty thousand, sort of thing. You know, like it just grows. Like when there's people listening listening to music, it's just it's just gonna fucking grow. So like it, it registers pretty quick, I guess. Um, you know, the first million, I was like, damn, this like, it's crazy. And then it sort of just went to the second and the third million. So I'm just like kind of used to it now. Is it hard to ground yourself? Like. Not really. Um, it's just like, it's, I'm sort of in life, like detached from that, I guess. That's like an internet thing for me, you know, like I can be Sempra, but like for the most part, I'm just a fucking regular kid in my bedroom, you know. Um, it's, it's just like, I think it's important not to get arrogant about that sort of stuff because like, why would you, what's the point? You know, it's just like, it's just fucking numbers at the end of the day. Other than having a crazy work ethic, um, staying consistent and putting out quality tracks, like, is there anything else you owe your success to? Or is there like, um, is there like any advice you'd give to anyone? Or is it, there's no, obviously no secret source to what you do. You do have a formula, but I, th I really think it comes down to hard work and, um, and putting out quality tracks over a consistent period of time. Yeah, no, definitely like the consistency is like, Super important, especially in like today's age where like fucking people are scrolling fast. So you need to like, you need to keep in their faces, but you don't want to be in their faces too much yeah. sort of thing. So I think that's why like I've tried to maintain and I have maintained like over a couple of years is like releasing every two to three weeks, um, like different genre tracks and all that sort of stuff. It just is like that perfect amount to like keep people thinking about you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely like uh, quality control. Um, get your image down yeah. you always want to have your your artist identity like a strong one yeah because i see that like you've got that on lock like you know what you're doing you, you're not even trying to like um you're not even trying to like push anything different like you're not even trying to like push like a tiktok bars or like anything else like you're sticking to what it is and it's working it's still yeah exactly like i don't i'm not the type of person to like sort of force myself into something that i don't want to do i guess like tiktok if i was to do tiktok i would do it in like some sort of creative way that's like really like individual to me because i i can't i can't sit there and watch people that are like yo check out my new single <laughs> like i i fucking i can't i can't do that you know like each to their own i guess um but yeah it's just like it doesn't it wouldn't feel like me and if i when i start doing shit like that and it like i'm doing things and putting things out that don't feel like me then that's like when i really need to question myself and what i'm doing um but yeah with with like the success i guess um and he had, like the advice that I would give is just to keep your your artist identity just like on lock, you know, like push yourself exactly as you want to be perceived. Um, don't act as anyone that you're not, because people are gonna like you for you at the end of the day. Um, yeah, definitely like consistency. Um, and like the other part of the question, like anything else that's helped me was um, definitely like cosigns. Uh, like networking is a massive thing. Um, the way I like came into the American scene was funny. It was like an Australian friend of mine that like used to live in my town. He made like music as well, and we sort of just like talked because we knew each other. And he he reposted one of my songs on his SoundCloud, and he had like sort of had his foot in the door in the scene um, before I had. Um, and then like someone from America like commented on my song, and he's like, "Oh, this is dope. Uh, we should like collab." So I like messaged him back. We like connected through Instagram, and then he connected me to like a bunch of his friends, and then from his friends, I connected to their friends, and it's just like it sort of grows. Um, but yeah, then like J Jay Green, when he hit me up and he put me on, like he put me in front of a lot of people, um, and yeah, I'm really grateful for that as well. So definitely like that that networking and like the people that you you come across will um, will play like a major part in your growth. Major major. major. Yeah, the first like big artist that you might have listened to or like seen that for like acknowledge you and then you were like, Well, this guy was listening to my shit. Um, definitely it was definitely Jay Green. Like I listened like obviously I'd I'd gone back and like found Peep and like Ghost and all that sort of stuff and then like gone deeper into their discography and like researched like the scheme of Posse Days and all that sort of stuff. So that was like really cool to have that happen. Like that freaked me the fuck out. But that was like, and that was like the only time that I've sort of like freaked out about like bigger artists acknowledging me. 
It was like the first like and one time, and then the rest of it was just like, all right, this is happening now. Yeah, because it was like a post you did up. Was it Tommy Lee or like what, who was it? Like yeah, DC? from um, yeah, Molly Crew. Yeah, Molly yeah, Crew, yeah. So like, crazy. What the hell? Yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah, it was pretty funny. Like the, Tommy Lee reposted you. Huh? Yeah. Tommy yeah. Lee posted. A, did you not see that? He posted like a you check your reel. He, po he posted a reel with like ultra violence on it. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and then um, yeah, so like. Then like Fat Nick and like Ramirez and all that sort of stuff. That was like crazy to, to like have them, like just like be around them and like in that environment was like surreal. And they were like super nice and like welcoming and it was like sick. Um, how did the new track come about with One and Only? They did some crazy numbers. Like yeah. Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head, but like I think it hit uh, one thirty seven on Spotify streaming global. Yeah, yeah. So. That came about, um, he hit me up a lot, like a while ago, and I made like an open for him, um, which is like the second half of that verse. Uh, so I made an open for him, and then he just like never got around to it. And then he just like, he um, messaged me on Instagram one night, I, I think it was like two or three in the morning. And he like, hit, I don't know why the fuck I was awake, but I was. And he like hit me up and he's like, um, yo, can you FaceTime? And I was like, I was reluctant, but I was like, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> Jumped on FaceTime. Um, and he like he was like, I want to make a funk house song, and I was like, Yep, I was like I've never done that, but we we can. Um, and he's like, um, he's like, Can you like make it right now? <laughs> and I was like, Yep. <laughs> like fucking, I was like, Fuck it, I'll do it. I'm not doing anything else. So I just like jumped up. I was fucking in my jocks. Just jumped on my computer. Seat was cold as on my ass. <laughs> fucking. Jumped on, like, opened this beat that I had. That was like, it was, it was just, like a funk beat, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a like a house beat. And he's like, oh, can you like convert this into house? And I was like, all right, I'll give it a go. Never done it, so I like, I gave it a go, and it like worked out. And then, um, yeah, we he recorded on it, then I recorded on it, then I like he like liked my my um my verse that I did in the first open months ago. He liked it better than the second half of the one that I, like the new one that I recorded. And I was like, all right, I'll try it out. I don't usually like doing that, but I, I did it and it, like, it actually worked really well. So um, yeah, so we just like made that song and then fucking our teams went back and forth trying to like negotiate it, dropped it and it just popped off. Yeah, it was insane. How many did it get first week? It was like... I can't even, it was, we got like two mil in eight days. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Like, can't even fathom that. Yeah, it popped off, eh? it was good. Good and nice. Good and nice. Yeah. Any other collaborations on the way? Or you probably wouldn't want to announce anything? Um, well, yeah, I can't, like, I don't, I, yeah. Um, I, tra I got a track with, uh, with Mikey the Magician and, like, Ramirez might be jumping on that, potentially. Um, Swig, his manager, hit me up today and I, he was saying Ramirez was mentioned that he wanted to do, like, a three-track EP. Um, so hopefully we can get that in the works. Um, I'll talk. I'll talk to him about it fucking uh, when he's here for the show. Um, other than that, not really. Uh, Bubblegum, we got a song coming out soon. And then mainly just like work on my solo stuff. Yeah. You talked to me um, a while ago, like coming up as an independent artist in New Zealand is kind of like climbing a slippery ladder while everyone is watching you climb up. How, how's the roof treating you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the roof's much better than the fucking ladder, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, it is It is like that with fucking just a straight rotten wooden ladder with fucking baby oil over it, bro. Um, yeah, it was like... <laughs> it was a shit experience. Um, it was It was good. Like, I, didn't, I just skipped it, kind of. I didn't really have to deal with, like, um, like fucking begging for support for too long, I guess. Um, it sort of happened fast, but I did have that period where I was like, Fuck you guys. Like, <laughs> like, I was like posting my music and not even my friends would fucking open the links. Like, like it was just like, yeah, like they sleep on you like heavily until like it's like borderline cool to support you. Like, until like they see someone else supporting you. Yeah. And that's when, that's when they're like, all right, now that someone else is doing it, I'm allowed to do it too. Cause like the sheep mentality shit, like fucking, yeah. as soon as the cool guy says it's cool, then, then it's cool. Yeah, it's like that with everything though, anything creative in New Zealand. So like it's, even even like with us, like even when, like when we're doing stuff like this, it's just like, you know, it's just I don't know. Cole never shares my shit. Yeah. Just terrible. We always get haircuts from. Me. <laughs> it's fucked up, bro. Nah. Got to share the homie shit. 
No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it is like that, that fucking slippery slope. Um, once you sort of get to a certain point and you get the rungs. But yeah, no, I agree with, even with anything else, like creative, I see. Um, it's just like, there's just that reluctance to like show support, I guess. Don't know why. How important was it for you to like link up with Teddy and Warlord and guys like that? Kind of having like a little online friend group overseas and then like eventually linking up with them in person? Yeah, it was it was great. Um, it was exactly like, like it is on the fucking internet, I guess, but like better because we can go do stuff. Um, so me and Teddy, like, um, we go back a while. We were just like, just straight chilling, like every single day on Discord. Like I'd just get home from university and like jump in the Discord and we'd just be sitting there like until fucking one of us went to bed. And that was just like a daily thing for fucking like two years. So I just like, I, I knew him so well at that point. It was just like, it was like exactly the same, like meeting him in person and stuff. There was no like awkward period where you like, are trying to like figure out their vibe in person instead of like over text. We just like <laughs> already knew. And that was all for a schema? Uh, no, it was before schema. Like, uh, really? yeah, me and Teddy like fucking, we, we, since like, it was like just, just about at the start of me like rapping. It was like when I first got my foot in the door, I sent him a message because I followed him and um, he never responded the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he, like, he just left me in the fucking requests because he, like, he, he made this, um, this track. It was the first track we ever released. He like, posted a snippet of it and then um, I like, responded to it and I was like, that's fucking crazy because I, like, I hadn't heard any underground music or like, like super underground music per se that was to his standard. Like, he was he's fucking amazing. Um, and I was, I was like fucking I was like wowed by that shit I was like god damn like hit him up and then like eventually he did reply um and he was like oh like there's no there's no second verse on this like track the track that I responded to he's like there's no second verse on like do you want me to do you want me, do you want me to send it to you and I was like yeah fucking know he sent it to me and I like I got it and then within an hour I'd like recorded it and like sent it back just because I just fucked with it so much and that was like the first track we ever released and this was like 2019 what track was that? Uh, it's good from the dirt. What do you think is your most slept on like project or track that you've put out? There's a lot, I guess. Uh, something somewhere is like one of my favorite tracks that I've ever made. Just like the sound and like the energy of it. Um, yeah, I reckon that's like one of my favorite songs off you. Like as soon as I had heard that, I like messaged you that day and I was like, "What the fuck?" Like yeah. like the vocals in the background of like, the beat, it was just insane. Yeah, no, it was like. I, I just fell into place that song. It was just like one of those songs, you know, like I, I was like searching for samples and I just like found that fucking perfect sample. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I need to make something with it. And then, yeah, just like the diversity and the vocals of that track and like um, the the time that I took on the lyrics and all that sort of stuff was, um, yeah, I, th I, th I think it's a bit slept on. Um, but hopefully as I sort of come up and like build this cult fan base that I'm looking to build, they sort of do the same thing that I did and just like go back and research and like find those like hidden gems in my discography that they like. Um, but yeah, then the, the the Art of Human Nature EP, um, that was definitely like a bit slept on, I feel. Um, a lot of people enjoyed it though, like the fucking, the super fans that are like willing to sit there and like listen and read the lyrics and all that sort of stuff and like um, actually enjoy it as a, as a project rather than like enjoying just like the sonic element of it. Um, yeah, definitely that. And then all the rest of it's just like fucking, just straight like funk bangers, I guess. Where would your music blow up first? Like, cause I know it's not like made in New Zealand, like what other countries did it blow up in like before here? Russia. Russia. <laughs> yeah, so like the first, like Russia, Russia's like real out the gate with like underground stuff. They're like always on it, like real early. Um, and I don't know fucking, I don't, I have no idea how that is a thing. Like how they're like so, so quick to like the underground shit. Like it was the same with like all the people that came before me. They they were all the first countries that they were popping off in was like Russia. Aside from the music, what's the most important thing to you? Look back going forward with the way everything's going. Um, just like sorry, just straight into the deep ones. Yeah, bloody, <laughs> hell, <laughs> bloody hell, mate. Um, just like keeping in, in touch with my roots. I guess like I'm obviously I'm going to be traveling a lot. Um, I think it's important to like give myself downtime. Uh, and like family time, like fucking hanging out with my homies and shit. Um, Cause that's just like, for me, that's like my fucking favorite part of life, I guess. But like besides the music shit, it's just like, like hanging out with my mum and my fucking dogs. It's yeah. like, that's like, I, I would need to like have that time, I guess. Yeah. And then, but other than that, like 
fucking music and like family, friends, fucking girlfriend, all that sort of stuff. It's just like super important. Yeah. Cause obviously the numbers are going crazy. Like you're very successful at this point. But honestly, to me, the real success is how you've managed to stay so humble and so down to your roots. What do you think like you owe this to? Cause I could imagine so many people in your position would be like completely different, but you just, you just treat everyone the same and you don't act like it's a big deal, which is so crazy to me. Um, but that's how it should be. Well, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Some pe yeah, different people deal with that sort of stuff in different ways. Um, I've never been like an egotistic person, I guess. Um, it's just like I'm an anxious person, you know. Like I fucking I don't I don't have high self esteem and all that sort of stuff. Like I have those issues. Like I deal with like that mental shit like every day. It's my life. So it's just like that's. I guess shaped me. It's like beat me down in a way to like a point where I can't even fucking like exceed that ego barrier that would allow me to be arrogant. Um, so yeah, it's just like just the way that I've been brought up. I guess um, you know my mum instilled like a lot of the values that I have in me. Um, and yeah, I guess it's just like fucking. There was no like secret fucking special source to like yeah. keep me grounded. I guess it's yeah. just just the way. Like, the fucking the melting pot of places that I've lived in and like <clears throat> the way I was bred I guess yeah what's well, been your experience of like performing your songs live like, obviously we've done shows together and like do you think you'll be doing in the states anytime soon or like you know Europe or like anything else like that? oh for sure um yeah no definitely I, I I find it like excruciating before shows like I fucking I absolutely hate the moments before performing I find it like, even that first show you did um was skip the boat and um in Napier, um, you you, were you told me after like that was kind of make or break for you. Like, can I do this live or not? Yeah, no, definitely. Like, um, I I knew I could. I'm like physically capable of like performing that live. Yeah. It's just like the, um, the the crowd interaction and like being in front of people that I don't know and all that sort of stuff that like um, really bothers me. Um, like there at that show, I was like fucking like I was like, you know, live the live show and the performance aspect of of music is just such an integral part because it's like where you connect with your fans the most is um is a live show and I, I thought like if I can't put on a show and like have people enjoy my shit live or like um I can't sort of step out of my comfort zone enough to be able to like look good on stage then there's just no point continuing which is a shitty mindset like obviously you learn and you grow but that's just the way that I thought about it um because of that anxiety I was like, if I walk away from this, like, not feeling good about it, then I'm going to be, like, fucking, like, this is going to hinder me forever, I guess. Like, I'm, just, I'm super sad. Like, I beat the, beat the shit out of myself when, like, I have awkward situations or something. Like, I think about them fucking for weeks afterwards. So, so it's like... Uh, it's just like my older, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like, that's, like, the type of shit you're, like, staring up at the ceiling at fucking 4 a.m. thinking about, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was, like, at that point, I was like, all right, this, like, I need to do this. So I did it, and it, and it went really well. Um, regardless of like the fucking time that I went on and like the amount of people that were there, like the energy in the room was awesome. And it was like inspiring for me to like be able to do that. You know, that's like unlocked a whole new world for me. I was like, I can actually do this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that show was like crazy. Like, uh, like the amount of people that like also like didn't know your music that were like friends with me from Hawke's Bay that came and they're like, holy hell, like who's this? Like, I didn't know someone was like in New Zealand doing this sounds like. Yeah. Like it's just it's just a phenomenal how it's where it's all gone. So that one guy on the boat with the speaker didn't know who you were. Yeah, like the the dude. Music. So yeah, there was a fucking dude that just like uh, he like was on the boat party um, before the show, and when, like I was sitting at a table with Dozy Doe and and Tyler and like Tuck and stuff, and we were just yarning, and then this dude like has a Bluetooth speaker and he just like just like walks up and like past the table like blasting holy smokes just like didn't oh, even yeah, I remember that. They, like didn't even so look at me or like realize it was me so it's just like it's just it's just crack up how like far the music spreads before people like put two and two together but yeah um no i definitely like want to get into the live shows more i've got like a, a bunch of plans that i won't announce here but like i've got a lot of stuff in the works with with that side of things um but yeah i, I have no trouble like performing my stuff i guess i if I get my cardio up, I'm going to be a lot better. But um, in terms of like the technical rap and all that sort of stuff and like the speed, I can keep up with it pretty well. Yeah. And people will see that through like the <coughs> um, the videos and stuff that I post. But I know people come to the shows with like, if they know who I am and they're coming to the show, they're coming with like a reasonable doubt that I'm not going to be able to do it. Um, and I think that's like the best thing for me is like when I can hear that 
audible fucking reaction to what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and I start rapping fast and like keeping up with it and like not um, not cutting out too many lyrics and all that sort of stuff is like that shit like fuels me, you know, like just like proving proving the doubt wrong, I guess. Do you lose your voice at all, like after that show or? No, 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 I didn't. Uh, the first show, I guess I did like slightly. I don't. I I could have performed again, sort of thing. Like the same thing with um, the shows that I did for you guys. Um, like I I figured out a way where I'm not damaging my vocal cords. Like um, even when I'm just like yelling to the crowd and stuff, I'm not um, projecting through my throat. I'm projecting through my um, my diaphragm, which uh, like minimizes like the the strain on your your vocal cords, which allows me to just like continue going, going, going. How do you stay so motivated, um, even at this point where you're at, you're still dropping songs very consistently. A lot of artists um, get to a certain point maybe where they can live off it or at another point and they get quite comfortable. How have you managed to just keep going? Because there's obviously no signs of slowing down at this point. Uh, it's just a hunger, bro, I guess. Like, uh, it's just, it's at the end of the day, like it's what I like to do. Like I enjoy doing this. It's not like, it hasn't become a chore yet. Hopefully it doesn't, um, but yeah, it's just like, I get anxious when I'm not releasing sort of thing. It's just, I've, I've like drilled it into my mind. I need to release, you know, I need to stay in their faces. It's just been like this for a couple of years. So it's just like, I naturally like had that motivation at the start when I started to see results. And because of like, there's, the, it's, the results have grown on such a fucking exponential scale. It's just like concrete in my head now, like that, that hunger just solidified, I guess, and it does it like it's just like at this point where it's just like not going away. And so I don't want to go away either. So I'm just gonna keep fucking going. What are the main messages you try to push like through your music? Fuck, that's like a, that's a deep one. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> forward for this one. Um, definitely like just just um, I want to speak to kids that are like me or like grew up like me, because um, I know a lot of like especially like today with like the COVID shit and all that sort of stuff, there's a lot of like fucking lost kids, you know, like um, like lonely people. And I, I grew up super fucking lonely um, and anxious. And I feel like <clears throat> providing these kids with, with like these, uh, these songs and these lyrics that they can relate to and listen to and feel like someone else gets it, you know, that's like, that's like the biggest thing for me. And um, like suicide awareness and all that sort of stuff, it's definitely just like, all my songs are like metaphoric and they're like, uh, they, they're just like characterizations of my problems that I have. So a lot of the time I'm, t I'm like, just like creating a fucking a scenario or like an energy that represents the issues that I like deal with every day. Um, and I feel like people, a lot of people pick up on that through just the energy and like the way the song sounds and that aggression that I bring, it's just like, it it's like a fighting sort of energy, you know? It's like, I want them to like wake up every day and just like say fuck it and just like keep going and like fight that, that bullshit that their head brings to the table, you know? Yeah. Who is the infamous pussy motherfucker? <clears throat> I don't know bro, if the shoe fits. It's a great answer. If there's a pussy motherfucker that was to walk into the building right now, that would be the pussy motherfucker. It, it changes, I guess. Can you tell us? <laughs> I'm off the clock. No, we don't do that. Yeah, no bullshit. Yeah, because one of the, like when we when we were having like um we had like that big talk the other night, like you said like some of the time it's like you're thinking about yourself, is that like that's like a Yeah. So like a lot of the time um when I'm like talking about like an entity or a creature or like fucking like uh someone that's pursuing me or someone that I'm fighting against, it is like literally like a representation of my mind because to me, my greatest fucking enemy is myself and um, the the issues that I deal with, with my, my self-esteem, um, my anxiety and all that sort of stuff. Like I'm literally like fighting that shit every single day and um, my songs represent that, I guess. It's just like, like I'm in a continuous battle with myself. So it's like, I, it manifests in different ways. Yeah. And so in my songs, it manifests as different people different situations, different environments, you know, like different feelings. Um, there'll be sad shit, fucking aggressive shit, even like happy shit, I guess. It's just like, it is all like a representation of what goes on inside my head. Yeah, for you like making music, is this kind of like, and expressing those feelings, is that kind of like a medication to you? Yeah, no, definitely. That's like, that's just like therapy. Um, therapy. That's, that's, that's sort of why I got 
so addicted to it in the, in the first place um, was being able to like put that stuff down on paper and I think it's super important with your issues to be able to speak about it and um, just be able to like verbalize how you feel and and writing songs gave me a means to do that and it like it, I got better and better at writing songs um, obviously th like over time that happens you progress but that also means that I progress in being able to articulate myself in the way I felt and come to terms with it and sort of attack it like that. Um, you know, if you recognize a problem, then it's much easier to tackle. And that is what music did for me. It's just like, it gave me the fucking ability to like see inside myself and really like project what I'm feeling and it fucking releases that in a way. You know, like things don't go away obviously, but they're much easier to deal with when you know exactly what it is. And like looping back to the other the other question about um, what, what my music means, uh, that that's also a big part. Like I can articulate that for other people too, that probably they don't have a voice for themselves, you know? And when people can like listen to my music and, and feel things like that, that's like that's like the main thing for me above everything. Yeah, because definitely like when I like listen to your music and even seeing how far you've come, it's like, it's legit like um, put a fire under my ass. Like it's like seeing that, seeing how far you've been able to come like from New Zealand and like seeing that like you can break out of it and be who the fuck you want to be. Like you can do it. Like it is, like it's a big inspiration. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's like, <clears throat> like just fuck what anyone says, I guess. Like uh, in New Zealand, there's a lot of people that are going to tell you otherwise, like, you know, they're gonna like laugh at you or be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, you gotta do that. Like, this is unrealistic type shit. Like, go fucking nail a fucking nail into a wall or something. Like, <laughs> like go fucking build a house. Um, but yeah, that's like, that's how we're like born and bred in New Zealand is just to like knock each other down. Because like, when people see you doing well, they fucking hate you for it because it's a, it's a projection of their insecurities themselves. Um, so yeah, that's like what my mum instilled in me is just like, not give a fuck. Like, Life, I feel like, is just not worth living if you're not doing something that you enjoy. And that's not just to say, like, oh, don't work a job because fucking, like, you don't enjoy it. I think it's important to keep yourself, like, on track towards a goal. Um, and I think a, a, a good way to, like, look at things like a nine-to-five that you're, like, waking up hating doing is that it's, that's not permanent, you know? You don't have to do that forever. Um, but what you do have to do is work. Uh, and work towards a goal and a nine to five or like whatever you're doing for money at the time if it's shitty um, or studying or something you're you're working towards a greater goal and that nine to five is a tool and that's sort of the way that I saw it while I was like um, starting to make music and starting to actually try for the shit was like I was like fucking outside painting houses and sanding walls and shit um, and I fucking hated it I, en I enjoyed it like I enjoyed the people that I work with but I, I hated the work um, Obviously, because I was a shit kicker, but um, <laughs> like it's, 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 it's like for me, it was always a side hustle. My job was on the side, and the my my music was at, at the forefront, um, and it was like a tool to keep me alive and surviving, and like fucking eating, while I'm working towards that goal. Um, and that's that's sort of just how I attack things, and how I I keep that motivation and just like say fuck it. This for me, I was like I never ever was like, all right, I'm gonna get a job and that's it. Like I just I, I just always like aspired to be better than mediocre, uh, in some way. And I just just I just manifested it I guess. So what jobs did you have before this? You said like you're painting and sanding, like was there any other jobs? Yeah, so I was I, I was a painter, I I worked in a gravel yard, crane like cleaning trucks in Australia, like in the fucking heat. Um no. I worked as a bar runner, so I'd like make drinks and shit and then like put them on a fucking tray and like run them out to pretentious people. Um, and then also I was a dishwasher, like just like back of house at a, at a, like a fucking a pub. And uh, yeah, that was like a, then I just, I figured it out, I guess. I got, cracked the formula and fucking did rap shit. But yeah, no, definitely I, cracked it. Yeah, I, I've done like just shit kicker jobs. I never progressed at, at any point working my jobs. I just stayed in the same position because I didn't give a fuck about the job. Like I wasn't looking to progress. Yeah, I wasn't looking to be the top dog painter. Eh? So. <laughs> yeah, you're progressing outside of it. So. Steve, 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 what? Is that his name? Yeah. Steve. Yeah, Steve. My boss, Steve. He still rings me up. 
How's the music going? How many, how many, how many hits you got? <laughs> <laughs> good. I loved it, man. Oh, that's good for it. That's cool that like you've sort of keep in touch with like people like that. Like, yeah, no, definitely. Be, that, that must definitely ground you too. It's like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's, it's, I mean, like I'm not a fucking different person. Like that, none of that shit that happens online makes me any different. No. That's not like it's just numbers, dude. Like it's it's like you know I'm creating art that people enjoy. That's cool. So why? Like, why do I have to change myself to, like, fucking adhere to that? It's like, my art comes from me as a person, like, so it's just, like, there's no need to fucking, there's no need to change, I guess. Yeah. We talked on the weekend, you said, like, obviously at this point, like, the numbers are starting to, like, feel pretty numb. Have there been any moments in your life where everything kind of, like, shook you and being like, whoa, like, that just happened? Yeah, so there's, like, there was, like, just those moments, but it, they were just one-off moments. So like things that happened, like the, um, like Jay Green hitting me up was like a one-off moment where I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then like um, the first time I ever got like 10,000 plays, I was like, what the fuck, this is crazy. Um, and then it just never happened again. So it's just like, oh, then the, the show, the first show, I was like, wow, that was crazy. Yeah. We freaked out a bit when you got 10,000 listeners in like one day or something. Oh yeah, like holy, holy smokes. smokes. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> when holy party, smokes dropped, bro. I was like, oh, that was crazy. <laughs> And then it's just, it's just like, it happens just like that sort of thing. Um, just like the one-offs and then it, it, it kind of happens again and I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm used to it. To you, was like Holy Smokes a song that like really took you to another level? Yeah, definitely. Like I, I dropped that that song and it didn't get any editorial playlist or anything, but it still like hit like 12K in one day, which was like fucking unseen for me. I was yeah. like, what the hell's going on? Um, yeah, so that like sort of showed me that I could, I have that like, like viral potential, you know? The Fallen was pretty good as well at the first. Yeah, that was like the first song to hit a million, but it was like a slow burn, yeah. um, whereas Holy Smokes was quite volatile. Um, and then Cowbell Warrior was fucking something else. Well, yeah, because it was like a slow grow, wasn't it? Like yeah. it was like, it grew like fast in like, the first couple of like weeks and then, and then, then like it slowed down. And then now it's like, what, 25 million? <clears throat> yeah, so it was like, I, re I released it. I remember I made Holy Smokes and then I was like, a little while after Holy Smokes, I was like, all right, I'm going to make another song like this, but I'm going to make it fucking stupid. And I, I was like, I'm going to just like go crazy on it and I know it's going to blow up. Um, I'm pretty sure I would have said that to you. Yeah. Like I was like, the song's yeah, going to fucking blow up. Maker, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And then, but Cowbell Warrior is actually like, it's, that song is a joke. Like it's just like a reference to, yeah. to how easy it is. Like I literally made it to be like, I can put cowbells in a song and just blow up because I can. It's just like, it's just so, it's such a fucking cheat code. Um, so that's what I did. I'd like made Cowboy Warrior and it just like, I dropped it and it like went well and then it sort of dropped off and then it like, sl like slowly went to a mil. And I think it was at like 1.4 mil when uh, it hit TikTok. Cause I think, so, talk, bro. yeah, no, it wasn't even that. It was like fucking Sounds like se seizure inducing shit that <laughs> made it blow up. With um, your genre of music starting to like really pick up now, do you feel like it's starting to get a little washed out and people are kind of sounding the same and at points even biting you and like what do you feel like you do differently to kind of make your mark um yeah well yeah there's the the drift funk per se is like a sub genre of the music that i originally sort of made like i've been doing shit that sounds like this since like 2019 so yeah. i was like around before that sort of took off but um yeah there's like i feel like a lot of people don't understand where that actually came from um, and are just sort of like jumping on the wave now and like have no fucking idea. But um, not not people don't bite me per se. Um, I, I can hear inspiration and yeah. a lot of people saying, and that's cool with me. Like I'm inspired by people like yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, definitely like it's oversaturated as fuck now. And I feel like this is, there's only a, a really small amount of time before this genre is going to die because of how much people are milking it. Like I'll, I'll see like um, people's Spotify accounts and they're just like, they've made like one song that's like blowing up and then the next three songs and they're like popular thing are like the same song but slowed down, sped up and then like slowed and reverbed. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, people, it's just, it's definitely been like monopolized in a way like people are fucking really like milking it for all it's got and like not innovating, um, which is fucking, I don't, yeah, I don't care. I can like, at the, yeah, at the end of the day, I can, I like, I cut past that because I can do more. Yeah. Um, and even within that, within that genre, I feel like I'm a little bit like, more like polarizing just because of the way I sound and the way I rap on it. Um, and no one else is like really doing that. But yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a, a fucking very saturated genre, but I'm gonna keep doing it. So you said you were talking about like uh, before, you were talking about how like uh, 
a lot of the stuff is from yourself. Like, do you, I found that like there was a song called Our Dear Boy that um, you touched upon, uh, like a friend of yours that went for a lot and actually ended up ending his life. Like, how was that? Like, dealing with all that, and how did you bring yourself to make that? Um, well, for for him, like his he was like super fucking into my music, so that was the only way that I could give back to him for what he did for me. You know, he was like. Uh, he was there for a long time, like like super supportive of my music. He knew all my lyrics, you know. He was like, he came to my house like a week before he passed, and he was like rapping my shit back to me like better than I could rap it. So I fucking it was like an older song, and I forgot the lyrics, um, which was just like cool. He um, yeah, he was definitely like one of my like he, my most memorable fucking and like active supporter, um, and the only way that I could possibly repay him for. Everything he did for me, you know, it was just to to create that for him and his family, because all of his friends and all that, they all they all like listen to my stuff too, and it it um it gives it gives him something to just like fucking be remembered by, and like um I I, I felt like just putting that song out there like something that he would have loved as well that I like made sure um to make a song that I know he would have loved, and um just putting it there to be there forever and just like oh, hold his memory I think was like really important to me um, and yeah that's just sort of, sort of how I push it and obviously like it was therapy for me um, to come to terms with what had happened and like to just say my goodbyes to him was just through that that was the only way that's the only way I could have done it um. What do you want your legacy to be when people look back at your music? I just want to be remembered, I guess, like, in general. It's just, like, make my mark on the world. I've always wanted to, to leave a mark in some shape or form. Like, even before I started music and all that sort of stuff, I just, like, have always, asp like, aspired to, to just be remembered. Um, and to be remembered in a good way, in a good light. Um, to be remembered for giving a voice to the voiceless or, you know, just like having someone bump my music at a party and enjoy it. I just want to like bring positivity or just fucking goodness to people's life, I guess. Yeah. What's coming up next for you? Um, what do you want the people to know? Is there anything? Like fucking just releasing music. It's the same, you know, say like every two weeks sort of thing. Um, some like big collabs coming, uh, more shows. Uh, shit's moving fast now, so just like keep Keep watch. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, really appreciated you, you awesome. coming in. Thank you for your time, Dan Berry. Cheers, bro. Bad ideas, I hate it. What it's like to be famous. What it's like to be dangerous. What it's like to be nervous. Can I help you? Can I help you? Do you serve a purpose? Do you make it worth it? Or set fire and burn it?